الصفا والمروة من شعائر الله رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل الأبدة من لساني يفتح قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وزقنا الطباء وأرنا الباطل باطلا وزقنا اجتناب أمري Let me start today before I talk about parenting I want to share with you an awesome mother because we live in a time where you can, we can really learn lessons from Prophet Ibrahim and Haja, from Haja. And one of the things about Haja, before I, I go into the type of mother she was, I want to talk about when Ibrahim brought Haja and Ismail to the desert, when they were brought into the desert. This desert had no water, no food. Allah says in the Quran, it was a valley that had no agriculture, no water. And Ibrahim brings Hajjah, his wife, and Ismail, Prophet Ibrahim brings Ismail, and Hajjah, his wife, to the middle of a desert, and sits down with them in their city. And now, you know, he has to leave them. He doesn't feel good about it. But no matter what Ibrahim did, always in his life he knew, inshallah, Allah has a wisdom, there is a purpose, why Allah is doing this to me. Even when Ibrahim was taking his son, when he was taking his son to be sacrificed, and the angels were watching and they were saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, what is this? Ibrahim is taking his son to be sacrificed, this is... This is something, angels, that is completely against their nature, right? This is something that they would, that they see as terrifying. And Ibrahim is, but Ibrahim is taking his son, and he's hoping that I know Allah is Azizul Hakim. Allah, whatever He does in our lives, has a good purpose behind it. There is a reason behind this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed that negative situation into a positive one. So Ibrahim is with his wife and his son. And he stands up and starts to walk away. And Hajar, Hajra is looking at Ibrahim walking away. And she starts running after him. What, you're going to leave us here? You're gonna, and Ibrahim didn't even want to turn back because he knew if he turns back, his heart will melt for his son and his wife. He didn't want to turn away. And he said, to who do you leave us? What are you leaving us? And he, he would go a little bit further and she'd run behind him and kept, keep, keep asking him. Until then she thought for a second and she asked this question. She said, did Allah tell you to leave us in the desert? Did Allah command you to leave us here? And he just said, without looking back at her, he said, yes. Allah commanded me to leave you, meaning my wife, and Ismail. Now I wonder how many wives could bear that. Their husbands taking them to the desert and leaving them there. Don't do that, by the way. <laughs> Don't do that. But Ibrahim says to her, yes, this is the command of Allah. I'm leaving you here by the command of Allah. And she says, if this is the case, if you are leaving me here and us here, meaning me and Ismail here because of the command of Allah, then Allah will not destroy us. Allah will not leave us alone. And then soon after that, we know what happened with Safa and Marwa. Inna Safa wal Marwata min sha'irillah. Safa and Marwa was a moment of a great test for a mother with her son. Not any more different because Ismail was, as far as she's concerned, he would die. Right? You leave this son in the desert, there's no water, he will die. No different than the test of Ibrahim and Ismail later on. But this is what I want to share with you as parents. One of the things that affects, you know, Ismail, when he grew up with this woman, Hajar alayhi salatu was salam, when he grew up with her, where did he learn his sabr from? That he could later on say to his father, Ya abati if alma tu'mar, Oh my dad, do what you have been commanded. Satajiduni insha'allahu minas sabirin. You will find me amongst the people that have patience. 
Where did Ismail learn this? And what is sabak? Because you know, one of the greatest memories of childhood, you know children, they have memories, right? Children, because I'm talking about parenting. Children have memories of their what? Child? Childhood. And one of the things that people have great memories of their childhood, just remember your childhood and think of your memories. One of the memories of your childhood is how your parents did, dealt with difficult situations. How your parents dealt with crisis in life. How did your parents deal with a difficult situation? Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal mentions a story about his father. He says that my dad was sitting in the masjid. My dad was sitting in the masjid and somebody came to my dad and started to argue with my dad. And Ahmed bin Hanbal was seven years old. Very small, but he remembers this. And he said, my dad just got up and turned away from him. It didn't even engage him. Just walked away from him. Right? A memorable memory of your childhood. We all have memories of our childhood. And your children will have memories of their childhood. And it, a lot of it comes from how your parents dealt with what? Crisis and difficult times. And here's the thing. Hajar or Hajra alayhi salatu was salam she had the sabah to deal with difficult times. She had the patience, and patience in Islam is, or sabah in Islam is different. The definition of sabah is different than patience. Patience is you're just patient. You can't do anything. You're helpless. But sabah is to know that Allah will change your situation. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu wasta'inu bis sabri was salaa inna Allah ma'as sabirin Allah will always test you but if you believe Allah will do good to you then what And if the children see that if the children see my parents had sabr in difficult times it will be a childhood memory think about Fatima Fatima was very young when Prophet Muhammad was in Mecca when he was being persecuted when people would bother him while he's praying and while the companions of the Prophet were being tortured, Fatima remembered the memories of her childhood at, with Prophet Muhammad when she was very young. She never forgot it. And it was a big part of her, her memories. But anyway, the point I'm trying to say is nowadays, sorry to say, and I'll, I'll say it quickly, nowadays parents show lack of patience. One of the ways we show lack of patience is we tell the child, go play with your phone. Go play with your video game. We don't listen to our children anymore. We don't have patience anymore. And when you're reacting that way, by the way, one very important thing I want to say. Listen to what I'm about to say, especially the mothers. Let's say if you have yourself, right? You have yourself. Let's say there was no ego. Let's say we took out, we sucked out the ego from you. How would you behave differently if you only had the self and you had no, what? How would you behave differently? If you only had yourself, you would simply be aware, you wouldn't react. You would be what? You would be aware something happened, but you wouldn't be what? Reacting, right? Shaitan reacted with his ego, Aba was takbara. He refused Allah and then had to couple. He was reacting to Adam alayhi salatu was salam. He didn't about with Allah istakbara over Adam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants parents to have sabr, have so that children will learn patience. And so don't do this. And, and I'm going to inshallah try to make it fast. So please just say, because that's some important things to say about parenting. First thing is, be aware of your parent, of your child's actions. Do not what? React. Do not what? React. Because if you immediately, your child does something wrong and you're immediately reacting, even in trying to discipline him, you're not disciplining him. In fact, there's a difference between punishing and disciplining because punishing is when you're reacting to your anger and punishing is when you're reacting to the wrong actions of your child immediately. Discipline is when you sit down with a child and say, you know the rules of the house, what are the rules if you break this rule? I'm not punish I'm not disciplining you because 
I'm angry with you. I'm disciplining you because this is the rule of the of the house. Mothers, very important to not react, to be aware of your child's actions, and then to discipline your children, not to punish your children. That's the first thing I want to say. Second, again, I have to talk fast. Ismail and Ibrahim make the Kaaba, right? Every father should have 10 things he teaches his child. Don't think you're only going to get an education in school. You want to build a relationship. Think of how close Ibrahim and Ismail got with one another by building the, the accomplishment of a father and a son. Every father should write down and a mother should write down 10 things I will teach my child. It could be, it could be teaching your son how to cook. Right? It could be teaching how to make biryani or falafel or whatever. Or how to build something, how to do something. Everybody has, and we know uncles here, like there are things that the brother that's the fi firefighter, I forget his name right now, Brother Ahmed? Huh? No. Yes. He's a firefighter, he has a lot of skills. We need to, it's called, in sociology, it's called webbing. The fathers need to, like for example, think of the experience of taking your child and doing zabiha with him. Right? Taking the child with you and sacrificing the land with your child. Teaching your child. Teaching your child will make the child learn respect from you. Nowadays what happens is, kids know more technology than the... So they think we know more. Kids think that they know more than their... And you have to teach them so they don't think that, so that they don't understand that. You have to teach your children a list of things that you think you can teach your children. It could be anything from fixing a car, to making a shed, to, to anything. Every father will make a list of this year, from this eight to next eight. You're going to teach your children how many things? Ten things you're going to teach. It could be teaching your son how to play soccer. Right? I'm going to come to soccer in a second. The third thing I want to mention. Ibrahim built the Kaaba, which is the foundations of all the masjids, because that's the first masjid. And all the masjids are sister masjids of the Kaaba, right? Bring your children to the masjid because the most important thing in these times is your children become friends with other Muslims. Your children what? Your children should become friends with other Muslims who have the same values, the same family values that you do. Bring your children to the masjid. And over here I want to mention that, yes, uh, inshallah, I, I'll mention this in my second khutbah. Very quickly, I will finish. Only five more minutes, inshallah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all good parents. The first thing I said, show sabr. Be aware of your child's actions. Do not what? Do not react. Number two, with that, with the first point is, do not punish them, but discipline them. Number two, spend time teaching them. Become their teachers. Every parent it's not just your purpose in life, it's not to manage kids. Sit here, did you do your homework? Did you do this? Spend time teaching them something because when you teach them, you build a what? And you show them you know more, there are things that you know more than them. Number, the next thing I want to talk about, the next thing I mentioned is, bring your children to what, where? Because they need to have Muslim friends like themselves. So they can learn the values that we have. And the other thing that I want to mention before we finish inshallah, because there's a lot to say, but I think what I wanted to say was more than what, I, what I'm going to say. I'm going to end here. But I want to mention three things very before. We have a soccer program every what? Sunday. Sunday at 7 o'clock. Those of you who are not bringing your children Bring them to the masjid at what time? 7 o'clock. No, sorry, 5 o'clock. 
Okay? The brother that is in charge of the soccer program, he's where? Where's the brother who's in charge of the soccer program? Stand up. Abdul Aziz? He, is right, he, he knows soccer really well. He's going to teach your children. Bring them to the Sunday school. I mean, sorry, bring them on Sunday at 5. That's the first thing. Second, the Hufaz who memorize Quran is, you know, every one of us should give a special congratulations to them. It is a great achievement, not only for this community, but for even the Ummah. Because wherever they go, inshallah, one day they'll be leading prayers. Right? They, in the time that they have spent with me, people like Fasi, he didn't just learn Quran. Dunya didn't just learn Quran. They also learned knowledge from me. They used to ask me questions. Every now and then they ask me questions, it becomes a discussion. Right? So they were learning Islam. They will be the future leaders of Islam. And over here, I want to say we congratulate you. And inshallah, Allah will use you for His Islam. Okay, the third thing I want to mention is that there's tafsir of Qur'an every Friday from 7, 7.30 to 8.30, every Friday. So those of you who are not coming to the masjid, please make your intention to come to the masjid. Because the children need to see you coming to the masjid. I want to mention something that I mention often, and I'll end with this. Sociologists say the first generation loses the language. So if you know Swahili, the first generation doesn't know it. If you know Urdu, your children won't know Urdu. If you know Arabic, your children won't know Arabic. Right? And then the second generation loses your culture. They don't know what is Banyani, what is Falafel, what is Hummus. They forget that. Second generation. The third generation loses the religion. So unless we're coming to the masjid, unless we are reinforcing our values, we are going to lose our identity. It's very important that we become active in the masjid and inshallah we are going to do great things at our masjid, inshallah. Rabbana Adina, is that maybe the first one to congratulate all of you for Eid? And thank you for our guests that came. So let's do dua and inshallah we will.